sophisticated one, be Asian day here. Today we're going to do the comparison between the Dell Precision 5550 and the Dell Precision 7550. Both of these two computers are 15 inch mobile workstations from Dell, but they're two very different types of computers. So I'm going to do the comparison with the physical dimensions as well as the touch and feel of this computer and some performance and what it can be connected to as well. So hopefully by the end of this video, I might be able to help you in figuring out which computer might be more suited to your needs there. First off, what these two can be configured with. They're actually very, very similar. So with the processor wise, they can house an i5 all the way up to a Xeon in these two computers here. And for RAM wise, they can go up to a maximum capacity of 128 gigs of RAM. And they do, both can be serviceable and or you can upgrade them as yourself as well too. And hardware is very similar as well too. What's different is the discrete graphics that you can configure these two with. So with the Precision 5550, it can house an NVIDIA Quadro T1000 or T2000. Whereas the Precision 7550, there's also available RTX 3000, RTX 4000 and RTX 5000 as well. So if you need more graphical power, then straight away, the Precision 7550 is you're going to be the computer you'll be looking for. Now as for display wise, there's a big difference there as well too. So with the, let's start off the Precision 7550 here. Now 7550, you've got your normal aspect ratio of 16 by nine, as you can see here. Whereas the Precision 5550, now this has got a gorgeous screen. It's got a nice aspect ratio of a 16 by 10. You can see it's got a little bit more, so you can actually fit more on the display here and you see some more thinner bezel as well. So display wise, this looks a lot nicer. I can definitely tell you that and you just can put more in the screen here there for sure. Now, for configuring wise, they're all very similar there. You can full HD with touch and non-touch and there's also 4K version of these two computers as well too for display wise. Let's compare the dimensions and footprint of these two computers here. So I'm going to put these two together because I'm not going to do it scientifically. We're just going to put side by side there. So I know the 7550 is larger in size. So I'm going to put it in the back here and I'll get the 5550 in the front here. And I'm just going to pop it right next to each other, front, back to front. And pretty much you can see, for my little finger here, it's pretty much under my first knuckle uh, is pretty much how large it is more. So uh, I think that's pretty much about one centimeter there for the difference in footprint there for the 5550 is a lot that's much smaller. Yet it also has a larger display. So that's pretty amazing there. I've got to say the 5550 wins in that department there. Now as for thickness wise, now I'm just going to put these through here and I can pretty much just tell you straight off of the bat that the 5550 is nearly the half the thickness of the 7550. There's no way of hiding that at all. So the 5550 does an amazing job. It does look sexy. It really does look really nice and feels really nice as well. Now as for weight wise, with the 5550, you're looking about 1.86 kilos. And as for the 7550, you're looking at 2.6 kilos. So that's around about 800 grams there. That's a lot there for you. So let's add in the power adapter as well. Now with the Precision 5550, it comes with a 130 watt power adapter. Now this power adapter charges the Precision 5550 through a USB-C port here. Now with the Precision 7550, it comes with a 180 watt power adapter and that actually is a barrel style, or style the old style that you are very used to with Dells here. So they're two very things. Now as you see, it's, they're about, I would probably, good to say it's about a quarter of the size with the 130 watt power adapter compared to the 180 watt power adapter there. Now I'm also going to add these two as a total weight difference here. Now with the Precision 5550, you're looking for the laptop plus the actual power adapter. The total weight of that is 2.3 kilos. Now with the 7550, the unit plus the power adapter, you're looking at combined weight of 3.3 kilos. So that's one kilo difference between the 5550 and the 7550. So if you're doing a lot of traveling wise, especially on planes, the 5550 does look a lot nicer there for you to travel with as well too. Port wise, 
let's start with the Precision 5550 first off. So first off, being so slim now, that it only has four Thunderbolt ports. So that's a bit of a massive change since the previous one, which is the 5540. And of course, it still has its headphone jack, which is great, and it's still got a full-size SD card radio, which I really like. Now, what Dell has also included is this USB-C dongle here for the Precision 5515. And what this little dongle has is a USB-A port and also HDMI port, so you can plug and actually have that available to you. So, but you do need to carry this around if you're traveling around to get, especially outputting during presentation there, you'd need, for need to have some sort of dongle there with you. So that's there, that's something you've got to carry and hopefully not lose anyway. So that's the Precision 5550. Now with the Precision 7550, this thing has all its range of ports and I love it for that. So you've got two Thunderbolt ports, you've got your Ethernet port, which is a bit of a shame that they didn't include Ethernet on this dongle there. So that's what's also missing there. So it's got Ethernet port, you've got two USB-A ports as well, you've got your HDMI port, you also have um, mini display port, so that's got you covered there, so it's really good in that sort of sense. You still got your headphone jack and you also got the full size SD card reader there, which is great there. So definitely, I like the actual range of ports on the 7550. You are carrying more weight, but hey, at least everything is with you and you won't lose that at all. Let's talk about keyboard and trackpad. Now, let's start off the keyboard first. Now, now with the Precision 5550, it's got a new keyboard here. Now, it's got a bit of a larger keys than before, and it's got a nice tactile feel to it still, and you see it's backlit as well too, and it's quite nice. Uh, they did change the power key, and it's now integrated to the with the rest of the keyboard to look more nicer in overall scheme. It's just more presentable there for sure, but it's something you've got to get used to where the delete key is not on the very top right hand corner there, but definitely nice there. Now, as for the 7550, it does have a full size keyboard and you've got your number pad system there, which is really nice as well too. So you can definitely see that. So it's definitely nice to have that. If you're going to talk about the actual difference of the feel wise, now this is all pure personal preference here. I like the feel of the 7550. I'm going to tell you the reason for that. Even though the keys of the 5550 is gone larger, I actually find myself typing a lot more quicker on the old style where the keys are a little bit more smaller there. I actually did do the measurement between the two keys. So the actual buttons or the keys itself of the 5550 and the 7550, for the 7550 it is about two millimeters smaller in each key itself. So overall you'll find the actual keys is a little bit more narrow there. So I actually find myself typing a bit quicker. I just feel it and that's about it. Now as for the actual the surface of the keys there, I find the actual 5550 keys a little bit more harder um, and a little bit more rougher. Whereas the 7550 keys a little bit more rubberized is what I can kind of say it. it's more smoother uh, is what I felt and I like that feel to it as well. As for the key travel they're both very very similar uh, so I wouldn't couldn't say it's too much. They do, do look physically different but feel wise they're just similar. but when you actually start typing I just because I type them both at the same time and I just definitely feel that the 7550 I just felt I was typing a little bit more quicker there uh, but that's about it. Now as for the actual trackpad now this is a huge difference there. That's definitely you can see how massive this trackpad is compared to the 7550 there. Uh, the 7550 looks really tiny in comparison to the 5550. Now I did make a video on my in-depth review about the trackpad about the 5550, if you haven't checked that out, I'll put it in the link of description below. But I did have issues with my palm clicking on it by accident. I just find it too large there. But I love the surface. The surface of this is really nice feel to it. I know there's some, some people have reported issues with the trackpad with the 5550, but hopefully it's just, um, we'll actually get on top of that very quickly. But the, with the precision range, I haven't heard much problems with the trackpad there. Now with the trackpad of the 7550, it, though it looks small, it's actually not. It's just because of the keyboard there, makes it proportionally big. But it's actually the perfect size. When you actually have your palm on there, you actually can still use your thumb quite nicely with the, and you won't be doing what I did with this one here while I accidentally kept clicking on the trackpad because my palm was resting on it there for sure. And you still got the physical buttons. I actually found the physical buttons quite nice to use. For sure, so uh, I found in some instances when I was actually doing some of my editing, uh, I actually was using the buttons more than just touching, uh, which is what I do for this. And I'm coming from an Apple base, 
I was very used to doing the tour touch there bear for but definitely I kind of liked the old style where the actual track pad is a little bit smaller and a better size there rather than this over crazy monstrous size of the track pad for the 5550. Let's turn our ears to the speakers. Now both of them when I measured the actual maximum peak volume of the speakers they both measured very similar there but what's different is actually the sound quality between these two computers here. So with the Precision 5550, I found it feels much more surround sound, more fuller sound compared to the 7550, as well as it has more bass as well compared to the 7550 as well. But when you actually put the 7550 at its maximum peak volume, then I found the 7550 much easier to actually listen to because it's didn't have that much tinny feel to it or less distortion compared to the 5550 but when you it you wouldn't normally do the maximum peak volume so you would just dial it down and if you want to dial it down quite easily the 5550 has much better speakers there i do wish that the precision 7000 series that dell would actually improve on its speakers it seems to be a very weak massive weak point in all of their 7000 series i just wish that dell can actually improve on them especially on the flagship range there they really do need to improve the speakers on the precision 7000 series there as for the fan noise i found the precision 7550 ran its fan a lot less compared to the precision 5550 doing similar types of tasks but the sound of the actual fan itself, I also found the 7550 just have a little bit lower pitch compared to the 5550. So I'm thinking, I guess the 5550 spins its fan a little bit more high in speeds. But in terms of wise, when you put these two on load, you do hear these things go off. But that's normal because these two are powerhouses computers. On that note, I might as well address the battery life of these two computers here. You'll find the Precision 5550 has a little bit longer battery life compared to the 7550. You're looking about a quarter more. So in terms wise, you're looking for about an hour to two hours, a lot more than the 7550. Now, this is not under the ultra performance mode. They both are very similar. When you put these two computers and ultra performance and you're just running it on 100% load, they both will be just under an hour there. Now, the difference is once you get into the better battery life modes, that's where the difference becomes. You'll see an hour or two on the Precision 5550 for the battery life from that one there. It's just that this one here, I don't know why, it just spends a little bit more battery on the 7550. Maybe from the cooling, I don't really know why, because I don't really hear the cooling go off more on the 7550. It just somehow doesn't have a longer battery life compared to the 5550. And I actually have these two very similar in spec. They're both running i7s with the Quadro T1000 there. Since I'm at it, I might as well talk about the docking stations. Now, with the docking stations, these two do run different docking stations there. So with the Dell Precision 5550, the recommended document station for this is the Dell WD19TB. So TB stands for Thunderbolt, and that is able to produce the 130 watt power that this computer needs to run for quick charge as well. They both have actually have express charge there. And the quick charge on this will be able to run that, that Dell WD19TB. Now with the Precision 7550, you need the WD19DC dock there because that runs two Thunderbolts. Quite simply is Thunderbolts shouldn't be able to do more than 100 watt, but they overcharge the battery able to do 130 watt through one single Thunderbolt cable. So but somehow Dell, you'd, because this requires a little bit more than that, you, of course you need two Thunderbolt cables there. So that's why the DC is for dual channel there. So you do need to run the WD19DC there. I have run the Precision 7550 using the WD19TB and it all works fine there. All you get is there will be a warning message to say that the dock it doesn't have enough power to actually run this computer here, but it does. Uh, what It's probably more that you don't actually have quick charge, but it, so you actually get a message saying it'll be on slow charge there. But if you actually do need to run it on the run, and of course, plug in the normal supplied AC power for this computer here, but I still normally do anyway, but you can run the WD19TB dock using this computer here. As for functionality wise, it's still able to function to the triple screen on the WD19TB dock using this computer here. It's just more about the charging system itself. It just doesn't produce enough power there. Now, as for 
performance wise i would still suggest you if you're running the, especially the rtx cards then definitely plug in the ac power adapter if you're using the wd19 tb dock so you can actually run that graphical power a lot higher performance so it's not running on the battery mode there i'm going to bring up an interesting topic for comparison you're either going to like me or hate me for this but it is presence now what i mean by presence is if I got rock up to a meeting, what do other people feel about me when I rock up with these two computers here? Now, what I feel is with the presence of the Prism 5550, because it's nice, slim, and really nice, sexy looking, I've got to say that, I feel like I'm there to, as a sales pitch person, uh, definitely with these nice, gorgeous sort of looking sort of type of system here. But if I rock up to a meeting with this piece of a computer here, being so thick, and you can definitely see the vents and stuff of like that, it's even though they both look very, very premium there, this one, I know I'm a tech person. I am doing some serious work here because you really wouldn't load something around this big here if you're actually doing some massive amount of work there. So I, I definitely feel that the 7550 has a bit of a more technical presence compared to the 5550. This one here is for definitely for me to travel around and maybe make some sales pitch, do some other stuff around there, definitely there. But if I'm actually doing some real serious work, People just feel that I'm doing more serious work on the 7550 for sure. I'd love to hear your comment on that. Put a comment down on what you think about this topic here and what you feel between the two there. Let's look at the performance of these two computers here. Now I have created a separate video regarding about a comparison of these two computers of its performance over extended period of time. It's actually quite interesting. If you haven't checked that video out, I'll put in the link in the description below so you can check it out after this video there. Now, as for the performance of these two computers, if you are mostly just running the processor only and not really much using the graphical power, but if it's graphical power that's on in burst speed, then Precision 5550 would do you fine. If your applications run a lot of systems resources very intensively, definitely go with the 7550 it is a much more stable performance and higher performance compared to the Precision 5550. Now, if you just need burst speed performance and not really, I'll, I'll probably speed up to about 15 or so minutes there, then the 5550 will do you fine. But after that, more than 15 or so minutes, 7550 is your sure win for that for performance wise. And if you're doing high computing, definitely 7550 is your best friend there as well. Now, if you do a lot of graphical work as well that runs the GPU a lot intensively over extended period of times. Again, 7550 is a way, way better choice for you than the 5550. The 5550 just struggles a bit on the graphical power just because it just can't simply quite cool it down fast enough. And so therefore, if there are more throttles out there, bit there. So things, if you're actually running SolidWorks, I definitely go for the 7550. If you're using Revit, you're probably going for the 5550 will do you fine. If you're doing 3D modeling work, definitely 7550 again is better on that sort of terms there. If you're doing high computing and a lot of massive calculations there, again, 7550 because you're going to get a very nice, solid, stable performance from the 7550, especially with the cooling solutions there. It is just stable there. I, can, I can't even believe how stable this thing is for sure. Whereas this is a bit flaky when it turns to over extended period of time. So it's great if you're just doing burst speed work, but if you're doing something that takes longer to render or do calculations or more than 30 minutes, go with the 7550. Now, what I feel between these two computers here, I definitely feel that the Precision 5550 feels more like a laptop there where you can actually transport, work it out at the cafe and around, move it around there just because of the lightness and the sexiness of the looks like there for sure. Whereas the Precision 7550, I feel this is more like closer to actual desktop replacement there. So you really move it between point A to point B, work and home and that's really what it is. It, you do, it is a bit heavier for sure. You definitely will grow a bit of muscles on your backpack or your shoulder bag for sure, or carrying around the 7550. But that's what I feel of the 7550. It definitely is more a desktop replacement compared to the 5550. The 5550 is more definitely like a laptop feel to it, even though they're both laptops, but that's the type of feel that you give and also you feel as well too, that the 7550 is 
more like a desktop computer there. I hope this comparison will aid with your decision. And as always, if you find this video informative, enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the right screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.